Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. There's been a furore in the United Kingdom over the last several days over a letter that Eric Pickles, the community secretary, wrote to British imams on the subject of Muslim radicalization and their part in preventing it. And some people are saying that it's horribly offensive to Muslims. Other people are saying that he's trying to help them and it's been blown out of proportion and some people are saying that he didn't go far enough in imposing a burden on them to deal with the terrorists in their midst. Now, I finally managed to read a full copy of it rather than the extracts that appeared in articles on both sides of the debate. And having read it through, whilst I wouldn't use the words he were used, I can see in some places, if not what he has actually said, what his intent might well have been. For instance, I don't see anything offensive in his statement that here is how you can find more resources for support if you believe that radicalization is happening and would like help in dealing with it. And similarly, the section on him saying that he has asked the police and other public bodies to provide more support to the Muslim community in instances where they identify radicalism. Again, that makes sense. It's a statement, if not of actual improvement, but of an intent to improve. And if nothing else is something that he can be held to in the event that that assistance is not forthcoming if asked for. Now, on the issue of whether or not imams in the United Kingdom have the position to deal with this, I'm less certain. He believes they do. Other people believe that the majority of radicalization happens over the internet, over social media, rather than in mosques themselves. And the majority of imams are in the position of parents speaking to teenagers, that by saying there are other paths than radicalization, you should embrace Britishness and Islam together because the core values are not in strong opposition, they are driving the rebellious element, the element most likely to reject British society towards radicals rather than away from them. But I don't know that. I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert on social media in the Muslim community. So I won't comment on that. But the thing that did trouble me about the letter was the statement that uh, imams should convey pride in Britain. They should stand, they should say that they are proud to be British and demonstrate that they are proud to be British. Now, no one has ever asked me to do that. I am potentially, if you accept John Scalzi's difficulty settings argument, and there is a lot to support it, playing on the setting where I don't have to prove my Britishness. But it still goes to be the proud to be British. I'm not sure if that is a fair thing to ask someone to prove. In fact, what does it mean to be proud? Well, it's some kind of involvement. You can only be proud of things that you're involved in. I can't really be proud that the sun exists or proud that orbital mechanics prevents the Earth from spiralling off into the vasty depths of space and freezing me to death. I have to be involved. 
So that pride, I can see involvement, involvement in a positive thing. But proud to be British, or what does it mean to be British? Again, it's not really a case of having pride that there are mountains, pride in the green and pleasant land existing in the first place. So British must be a socio-political construct. And because it is something you have to be involved in, a socio-political construct that occurred after I was born. So am I proud of the way the miners' strike was handled, proud of the response of the British military to IRA atrocities. But I can, to an extent, understand the factors. I certainly wouldn't say that they were necessarily the worst things to have happened, but I would not say I was proud that they had happened. But they happened before I could really influence things. So what about a more modern interpretation? The socio-political construct <clears throat> of this morning. Am I proud to live in a country where we're spending money on nuclear weapons when there are schools and hospitals in need of funding? Am I proud that there is a bedroom tax? Am I proud that there is debate over whether prisoners should be given unfettered access to educational materials. I wouldn't say I was. So obviously I'm not proud of the totality of Britishness. So is it the, a smaller thing? Is it sort of the British values? Well, what are British values? If we are to measure British values, then surely they are the things that drive the way we act. And one of the strongest demonstrations of how we act, how we define our virtues, is by the people we choose to lead us. So again, we're back to what the government is doing as being Britishness. So I'm not proud of the social construct. Now, it might be said that I could leave, and indeed I could. I could move to the United States, I could move to Sweden, I could move, well, potentially not to Australia because there are very stringent entry requirements. I could move to Japan, I could potentially, I suppose, move to North Korea. So, am I by staying, saying that I'm proud by default to be British. I don't think I am. In those other countries are not countries that I would automatically say I was proud had I been involved in the position they are in. Most Western democracies are better than, say, living in Africa. The corruption issues in Africa are greater in impact on the general person than most Western democracies. The intergroup conflict is more brutal in some countries than others. So am I more in favour of Britain's situation than I am of North Korea or South Africa's, potentially. But in the same way that given a choice between losing one eye or losing both, you can both choose one eye and prefer, where possible, the third option of losing neither eyes, to merely remain in Britain because it is not a bad option does not indicate pride. So the idea that Muslims should have to demonstrate, display, claim a pride in being British seems 
to me, offensive. That to be a citizen and a Muslim, you should somehow feel within you, or at least say that you feel within you, a stronger support for the government's actions than merely the action of a citizen in a democratic country supporting the government as the enactors of the democratic process. The, to be a Muslim and British, you must somehow believe that it is not just a potentially acceptable, but actually a worthy and ethical and moral step to be spending money on Trident when children are dying of preventable diseases somewhere in the world. That military funding is more important than the 4,000 people who die every day due to unsanitary water. That being a Muslim is such a negative thing that the only way to buy it off is to accept a standard of compliance to Britain and not just to Britain but to the current government's perception of what Britain should be that you're not being British, you're being fanatical. So to an extent, Eric Pickle's letter suggests not an end to radicalism, but a start to radical Britishism, a fundamentalist approach to being British, that what we are is the way that everything should be. That we should be out campaigning for more military spending on Trident because Britain has Trident. Britain needs Trident. So to support the government's actions unquestioningly is to buy off the taint of being Islamic. It's, and it's not, I don't know if necessarily that was his thought process when he wrote it, but that seems to be where it comes to, that by asking Muslims to display pride in Britain, he is holding them to a standard that nobody has thought of holding me to. I, because I attempt to analyse my own behaviour, have considered it. But how many people are passing without ever considering that? How many people who have read the letter will have thought, well, if I think it's okay to hold Muslims to the standard of having pride in Britain, then do I hold myself to that? If I do, what does it mean? Now, whether or not Eric Pickles meant that, I think we need to move forward. We need to abandon the idea of pride in nationhood as a whole. Embrace the idea that pride is something you are involved in. Be proud of the difference you have made. Be proud of the poor actions you haven't taken. Be proud of valuing good over bad. Be proud of taking the difficult but ethical path over easier paths. But don't be proud of something that in most circumstances is merely the result of birth and a failure to go somewhere else. That's uh, ranty enough for today, I think, so toodaloo.